want to, I want to encourage you to buy the CDs. Um, I, I listen to the CDs myself, and out of that come more revelation. Amen. So please go at the back and order it. They're going to compile the package, and I believe it will be a blessing unto you. I will have it out here within the next 30 minutes to 40 minutes. Tell somebody that is true. That is true. You will get it. You've got to listen fast so that I can preach quick. Okay? Praise God. Praise God. There is a world that we're living in, and there is the weight that we live with. And then there is the word of God that we live by. And though we live in this world, and though we live with a weight, it makes it easier because we live by the word of God. Can somebody say amen? amen. Praise God. If you don't have the word of God and you don't activate the word of God in your life, it will become very, very tiresome. Praise God. And it's through the Word of God and the process that the Word of God takes you through to take it to a place in glory. Last week was extremely, extremely hard. The last two weeks was extremely hard because we dealt with a very, very strong subject that is, that is a, a subject matter that lays in the bosom of the enemy. The enemy would not want you to know those things. Many, many, many do not uh, have much revelation to preach about it. Not that I'm saying that I have great revelation to preach about it, but it, it cost us some years for me to ultimately understand fully what that is all about. And this morning I want to conclude the, the glory subject matter. Next week, the Reverend Paul Coupe will be ministering to us. So you've got to bring friends. Amen. This is a dynamic and powerful woman of God. So we had a powerful encounter last week. Can somebody say amen? amen. Many people understood the importance of being delivered from uh, iniquities and transgression. You know, iniquity, and the story came to me this week, iniquity is like a... Iniquity is, is the bloodline. Iniquity is what you born with, that you inherit from your, from your forefathers. You understand that? It's in your bloodline, it's there, you don't even know it, but it is there. And it's often what is defined as the seed of sin. The seed of sin. Remember, we are not sinners by what we do and what we did. We are sinners by birth. Amen? We are sinners just because we are born. And it is similar to the fact of this particular fruit. Most fruit, most fruit develop into, into fruit being, being the, 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 the growing process takes them from a seed to a tree and then when the fruit arrives it starts with a flower. Everybody say a flower. And this is a little secret, not a secret, many of you will know it, but this is something that I, that I discovered this week that if, if the insect that normally, or the worm that normally sit, we find in the fruit, it normally does not necessarily creep into the fruit. It starts by creeping into the flower before the fruit is formed. The insect settles itself in the heart and the seed of the flower. And as the flower develops into the fruit, the seed, of the iniquity is there. In a similar way, we find ourselves in a similar manner where the seed of iniquity is within our spirit, irrespective of who we came to be and what we are and, and where God is taking us. And, and this will help us to understand that God has, the scripture says that we read last week, He was bruised for our iniquity. And he was wounded for our transgression. So much revelation came to us and it would help us to understand the reason why people do not progress to the glory place. Amen. The reason why people do not maintain their life in glory. So today church, get ready for today. Today I want to talk to you about the title and the Holy Spirit gave me the title. The title is Don't Count Me Out. Amen. 
being knocked down by a car. The baby lying there and a few people walking past looking at this baby wondering why is this baby laying there but find themselves continuing on their journey. Another car comes past and drove over the, lady, the, the two year old girl baby's legs and did not even notice this child laying in this road. Many people walk past by now, it is possibly about 50 minutes and this baby is still laying in this road. Many people moving past at the speed of the busyness, seeing the baby but not making time to pick the baby up. Eventually the clip shows where the mother appears on the, on the scene and the mother picks up the baby, rushes the baby to the hospital to discover that later the baby died. The story indicates how low mankind and humanity has a suck. In the same way, they just reported how a woman on a major taxi ride in Johannesburg was stabbed 50 times with a knife in front of a busy taxi ride. Many people saw this taking place, but nobody took the courage to stop this from happening. And it was a previous boyfriend that she had that did this to her. And you might have seen and found this happening all over our communities. Is that so church? Can I hear you? Amen. Agree with me. And this concerned me. And this is what I discovered. They, the psychologist and, and sociology calls this the bystanding effect. They call it the bystanding effect. The, the bystander effect. They say that what it means is that you are present but you're not participating. Can I say that again to some people? You are present, you're experiencing what's happening here in front of you, and many people can experience what's happening in front of them, but they just stand there and watch it as if it is nothing unfolding in front of them. Listen, I cannot see people standing and going lost into eternity. I cannot see people not achieving their What do they call it? The bystander effect. So tell somebody, don't count me out. I'm going to glory. Let me just get these lights out of me. Praise God. I'm loosening myself up. Tell somebody he's loosening himself up. Okay, okay. Praise God. So at this moment, would you like to stand for me? Would you like to stand for the reading of the word? The word of God is going to be found in Zechariah, Zechariah 2. You know what? I haven't preached out of Zechariah. Um, I, I can't remember that I ever preached out of Zechariah. And it made me read the whole chapter of, uh, the whole book of Zechariah, understanding to great extent what it is that this prophet was all about. Zechariah the prophet, and you will be seen in a minute, Zechariah the prophet was a prophet God used to speak to Israel. And whenever the Bible uses a prophet to speak to Israel, it speaks to us today. Amen? Israel is a representation of the church. Israel is a representation of you and me. Zechariah prophesied and at this time, the people of God, Israel, is in captivity. Captivity in Babylon. Now you will remember that the people of God was in captivity in Egypt. This is a different captivity. This is a captivity in Babylon. 
and is speaking the word here and this is to indicate to us whatever and wherever you are today God is able to shift you and off this morning you don't have to be concerned about the general a generational curse God is about to shift you out of it this morning amen can I get some agreement in this place this morning I said there's an emotion in this place morning let us read when he looked up and there before was a man with a measuring line somebody help me somebody help me there was a man with a measuring line somebody read for me John can you read for me come on somebody there was a man with a measuring line you stay there you stay the measuring purpose of a measuring line, I want you to get this this morning. The purpose of the measuring line is, is, is to see how far I can go. Come on, somebody. It's to see what my limitation is. So don't come to me, you stay right there. Amen. Praise God. Read for us, John. The man looked up, and then before me was a man with a measuring line in his hand. I asked, Where are you going? He answered me, To measure Jerusalem. Watch this now, watch this now. To find out how wide and how long it is. Come on, just pause there for a moment. How, how wide and how long Jerusalem is. Yeah. Go ahead. I asked, no, I've been there. Then the angel who was speaking to me left, and another angel came to meet him. So you get the picture. Zacharias saw an angel with the measuring line. And the picture is this angel was going to measure the width and the breadth of Jerusalem. So he saw another angel. And what is this angel all about? Said to him, Run, tell that young man, Jerusalem will be a city without walls. Come on, somebody. Because of the things that we have made and livestock in it. Come on, just read that again, Jonathan. Just read it again. In other words, there's not a need for a measuring line. Come on, somebody. Because the measuring line is limiting you, it's telling you, I can go thus far.
prosperous and have enough things but can still be a disciple. Do you know, we, we cannot just refer to cycle being a negative manifestation of things. You could, you could have good things coming to you, but it's the same thing that comes to you. That's also a cycle. If the devil wants to keep you in a cycle, and when, when you're in a cycle and when you're in a trap, you go around in circles. Do you remember the story where the people of God left Egypt and they found themselves at a particular mountain? And they found themselves going around for years on this mountain. Walking from angle to angle. I, I love the story once where this husband, and for many husbands, they don't know the, the route of where they're going. I always tell my wife, do you remember where we must go now? Then she directs me. That's why your, your um, what do they call this GPS system, as a woman voice speaking to you. <laughs> Because women like to tell you where you must go, is that so? And listen for the good or the bad of it, it actually works. You know what I'm saying? It actually makes you okay to fail, because then you both stop. And it, it's better if you both fail and you can get both out of the situation. This man told the story how he was driving and his wife, he was not listening to his wife. He was just following his own head. And he was driving for about an hour and he saw the same shop. He came past an hour and he recognized this. He says, How come the shop moved here now? <laughs> and the wife said, No, we were past here an hour ago. That means that we're just at the same place. We've been going around in circles. Some of you will remember when, when Robbie and Alex were kids, my wife used to go into clicks and ask her if clicks was this rocky horse. And I would, uh, they would kill the two of them. I would throw a two running and they would get on the rocking horse and they think they're getting somewhere. <laughs> I can stand and talk to friends. They stay here, but they're rocking in a lane. Thinking that they're rocking somewhere. <laughs> That's how people are. That's how we are. Comfortable and the devil is preaching to you. You at the devil's altar and he does not even look back. You are stuck. When the devil keeps you stuck, he limits your vision, he limits your effect and your impact in your life and in the kingdom of God. If you're stuck, you'll be limited in your own life and you will also limit the house of God. If you're a financial man, God would give you the ability to go out and get more money so that you can bring more money to the kingdom of God. If you're a minister, God will progressively, progressively move you personally forward so that you can bring the giftings into the house of God. And the house of God moves forward as well. Why does this house move forward? Because we have gifted men and women in this house. They determined to not remain stuck. Amen? Somebody say amen. amen. I want to bring you to an opportunity where Jesus wept. Jesus wept. At two occasions in the Bible, Jesus wept. The first occasion, was in Luke, Luke, Luke 19 verse 41. Jesus came up to the city and he looked over the city and he wept. And the other occasion was in John 11, where Jesus stood in front of Lazarus' grave and he wept. Two things this tells us, that Jesus was concerned about people. Jesus was concerned, or is concerned about individuals. Now, if you read that text, bring that text up for me, Clarina, in Luke, in Luke 19, verse 44. Luke 19, verse 44. And, and said, if they will dash you to the ground, you and the this is what will happen to you. Jesus came into the city. Jesus looked over the city and he went. The bottom line is, they did not recognize that this was truly Jesus. That's the bottom line. But look what happened. They will dash you. This is what happens if you miss God coming to you. They will dash you to the ground. You and the children within your homes. Where? Within your homes. 
They will not leave one stone on another because you did not listen to this. You did not recognize the time of God's coming to you. That terminology means, in the Greek it means, you did not recognize that the Son of Man, your Savior, has arrived in your life. You did not recognize that Him that is your Redeemer, Him that can pick you up out of your deep mighty clay, has arrived in your life. Him, the, the American terminology is, because that's where the word Bishop comes from as well. The Bishop of your soul has arrived in your life. The bishop of your soul has arrived in your life and you did not even notice it because when this type of person arrives in your life it is for the purpose of shifting you out of where you act in your life to your next level in your life. So yet the people of God were stuck in a place but they miss the arrival of him that can propel them out of. And many people will sit in a service like this would hear the word of God and say, but this is truly what I need in my life. But yet they would remain and not accept Jesus Christ as their personal Savior in their lives. Look what happens to them. They will dash to the ground and you will remain operating. Can I interpret in my own words? You will remain operating within your confinements of your war. God's visitation is here today. And if you can acknowledge God's visitation, He can propel you. Because anything that manifests in the natural has to first happen in the spirit. Therefore, many people, many people live their lives, watch this now, watch this, in the past. But they're trying to move forward. Can I say that again? Many people live their lives in the past. They wake up in the morning, I've been divorced. I left me. And now I have nobody else. Oh, I'm so lonely. You live your life in the past. You, 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 the company that you work for, uh, a couple of years ago closed down and they retrenched you. Now you don't think that you can get another job and therefore you, when you go for a, new, uh, for a new appointment or a new interview, you go into the uh, interview room and you say, I'm not going to get this job. Why? Because you love me with your mind in the past. But you're trying to move forward. It's somebody understanding me. It's like a driver of a car. He keeps on looking at his rear view mirror, but the car is moving forward. Guess what will happen? They ask me, how can you 
change your wheel with a tuxedo? How can your wife stand next to you looking at you, holding the jacket in your hand? Fathers, you can't with you now. Watch this. They don't understand. This is just where we are right now. But we're actually on our way somewhere. This is what Pastor Pat said. Yes, the deal. Check this out. I'm not going to become like you. I'm just. But other people that are stuck look at you and they applaud you. Because they're all stuck. And you all have a party. But watch this. The minute you decide, I ain't remaining here. I'm moving forward. Then they'll stop talking back. Like a drug addict, you, you know, you go, go for two weeks without it. 
but I know you will be back. That's a, a sign of being stuck. The people of God were caught up in captivity in Babylon. Egypt is a type of captivity. So in Egypt they needed a deliverer. Everybody say deliverer. deliverer. Moses was their deliverer. We need a deliverer. Our deliverer is Jesus Christ that died for us in the cross of Calvary. As if that is not enough. They were delivered from Egypt. But now that they're out of Egypt, here they caught up in Babylon. Now that Jesus has died for us on the cross of Calvary, we caught up and kept to feel another sister. Yes, we say he died for us and therefore we are free. But are you free to be free indeed? Another system has caught us captive. Many are saved. Many are delivered from sin. But many are not moving forward. That song says, moving forward, not going back, I'm moving ahead. Pass this over, all what I preach now. And we're going to sing that later. Amen. You are free from sin. Because you accept the deliverer. But now you need to be freed from Babylon. Because Babylon is a system. Babylon is a mindset. You can sit in the house of God and still be caught up in Babylon. So Zechariah has come this morning to declare a word for you this morning. And he says he saw an angel. And the angel had a measuring tape to measure how far you can go, how high you can go, and how wide you can go. But then he saw another angel. And this angel determined that, listen, your life has no limitations. Your territory has been enlarged. What you have done. Right now. What you have done this weekend, you can even do bigger. I'm speaking to myself, I'm speaking to Pastor Brad, I'm speaking to you. Wherever you are at right now, God can propel it to beyond where you are at. It is not your destination. If you're alive, that's not your destination. Many are saved, delivered from sin. But the, the, the Satan has kept, us, has kept us incapacitated and trapped in a system of Babylon. Watch this. Daniel was caught in Babylon. Guess what they do in Babylon? Guess what they did with Babylon? With Daniel in Babylon. And these three, 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 three friends, Sadrach, Mishnah, and Abednego. They changed Daniel's name to Baal Shashar. Babylon, the system, even changed your name. Do you know what that means? They, they try to influence your identity. They try to confuse you who you really are. I don't know if you grew up where I grew up, but when I grew, where I grew up, they, they, and you appear among the clique, they change your name. Your, your name is no pillow or your name is no butter. Watch what 
Proverbs that takes his Proverbs 18 verse 20 says, but let me say this first. Babylon, do, do you know what they did with Daniel? John, they, they, they even tried to teach Daniel the language of the Babylonians. They tried to denounce your Hebrew culture, your Hebrew language, even your name, and they tried to teach you a different language. And you know, when they take your language away, they take your word away. Come on somebody, that is very deep. They try to teach you a different language. When you go to the prison,
Babylon today. If you can break out of your mold today, yeah. come on somebody. Yeah. If you can break out of the ordinary today, yeah. if you can allow yourself to be determined to be set free out of the issues and the struggles and the mundane things that keep you stuck. Talk about the old things, talk about the past, talk about the issues of the of, of
Do you know the guys were putting up the fence yesterday? And, and that's about three quarters of the fence that's up, or half, not even half. Parasite, precast walls will still go in there, which is all at the back, and they'll do that this week. Jerusalem has walls around it. And do you know what we do? I got to this. <clears throat> do you know what we do? We build walls. Have you ever heard our people say, we build walls around us to protect us? You see, he hurt me. And I did not expect that it was going to go out with deletion. And now that I'm disappointed, I build a wall for the next boy to come to me. Why is the wall, the wall is to protect me? Isn't that what the purpose of the wall is? The wall is to protect those that's coming from the outside. That which is inside is valuable to you. But guess what? You got to break the walls down. Because Jerusalem is a city without walls. You get it now. The very walls that you put up to protect you are the very walls that prevent God from coming in to bless you. You cannot put walls up for yourself because Jehovah will be a fireball around you. And when you realize that Jehovah, God our Father, is a fireball around you, you will be able to go beyond your limitation, beyond where you are today. Everybody stand in this place.